Chapter 400 to 402. Okay, the previous chapter was just a joke, and that's not how the story ends. I wrote that out of frustration for being unable to write the Tsukihai versus Abito fight. The damn Kemue is too much of a hack. No wonder Kishimoto Sensei took it away from Abito, else Abito would have been undefeatable even by the most powerful Jutsu. Sai, so anyway, let's get started. Tsukihai threw a kunai that sailed right through him. It didn't even get close to touching him, but it did generate a huge explosion on the other side of the room. Tsukihai persevered despite the futility of her struggle, since she wishes to cover the area behind Abito's back in smoke so that Abito does not realize what is behind him. And Tsukihai's plan was working, Abito was unconcerned with the futile struggle and continued to walk ahead, step by step. With a chuckle, he remarked, why struggle in such an unattractive manner? He was very amused by this meaningless effort and knew that Homosubi wouldn't be able to continue much longer. Why don't you just accept your fate? You are well aware that you have no chance of winning. I can consider letting you live if you choose to surrender and reveal all of the information about Emmet Tsukumi on your own volition. Tsukihai let out a frigid snort. Keep dreaming. As if I'd betray Emmet Tsukumi in front of people like you. You definitely are a stubborn one, aren't you? Abito asked. Tsukihai muttered as she threw another pair of shuriken, think whatever you want. Sigh, and here I was hoping you'd be a little smarter. Well, I suppose your tenacity is at least laudable. If only you had more brains, you could have been a true threat, Abito muttered, lifting his lone hand. That's right. Continue to get closer. As she lurched backward, Tsukihai thought to herself, the closer you get to me, the closer you get to your first death. It didn't take long for her back to be against the wall, and her ragged breathing revealed that she was terrified of what was about to happen. She only had one kanai in her hand, and it was the last one. She had no other weapons in her bag. But I still have to buy a little more time. Tsukihai reasoned as she began to wave this kanai at Abito in an instinctive retaliation. Slash. Tsukihai's hand waving the kanai phased through Abito, but it did no damage, and just as she was going to wave the kanai again, Abito grabbed her wrist. Tsukihai wanted to smash Abito's family jewels with her knee now that Abito is no longer intangible, as the agony in the balls is the worst physical pain in the universe, but Abito appeared to see through her plan and used his own knee to protect his family jewels. TCH. And here I was thinking that by destroying them, I may have killed you. Tsukihai grumbled angrily. Nice try. Chuckled Abito, before continuing in a melancholy tone, but this is where it all ends. A tree vine grew from his sleeve and wrapped itself around Tsukihai's arm. Vines erupted from the ground and began to wrap around Tsukihai's both legs, restricting her movements. They became stronger and stronger, tighter and tighter, to the point where Tsukihai couldn't break them even with all of her effort. You beast, let off of me. Tsukihai cursed like a hapless maiden, attempting to release herself from the shackles. Come on, there's no use in putting so much effort into it, you're not going to be able to break free from these vines anyway. It would be prudent for you to remember that the more you resist, the tighter these vines will become, and the sooner you will perish. Abito forewarned that Tsukihai's battle came to a halt as she listened to Abito's remarks and Abito nodded, See? Is cooperating really so difficult? Now that you've been apprehended, I can get some information on Amatsukami, but I suppose that we'll have to wait until the situation in Karagakura is resolved. He continued after a brief pause, but I suppose I should at least take a picture of your face. The Manjiku Sharingan was awakened by Achiha Kunoichi. Who exactly are you? I have been wondering for quite a while. As he reached for Tsukihai's crow-beaked mask, Abito muttered, No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Tsukihai shouted in a panic, You can't see my face, please don't. And why not? Abito inquired, frowning. Be because. Tsukihai blushed as she moved her face to the side. Because? Abito inquired. Because that's sexual harassment, and if you sexually harass me, I'll never be able to marry someone. Tsukihai shouted vehemently. After Tsukihai's exclamation, there was an unpleasant stillness in the room. Ah, even Abito was stumped. After a little pause, he burst out laughing, ha ha ha. You're funny. Now I'm much more intrigued. No, you can't, Tsukihai answered, shaking her head. You'd never be forgiven by Kemisama? Don't worry, Kemisama wouldn't mind if I satisfied my curiosity and saw your face, Abito replied with a chuckle. Please don't, Tsukihai said, shaking her head. Haven't you heard that curiosity kills a cat? Don't worry, this cat is exceedingly difficult to kill. Abito murmured as he began to remove the mask. And that's exactly the problem, this cat is really, really hard to kill. Tsukihai grumbles inwardly. As a result, I had to make a lot of preparations in order to be able to kill this cat. However, she continued to perform on the outside. Please don't, shouted Tsukihai, scared, as she sought to keep Abito from removing her mask. Abito, on the other hand, appeared unconvinced and removed Tsukihai's black crowbeaked mask. Abito was speechless when he saw the person inside and could only remark, Ah, I didn't expect you to be in. No wonder, you didn't want. Inside the mask, he saw the face of an. Okay. Tsukihai let out a sigh. Just murder me? Well, don't worry, Abito remarked, shaking his head. It doesn't really bother me what you look like, I was just a little shocked, anyway, I'll murder you after I extract intelligence from Amatsukami. Do whatever you want, Tsukihai replied despondently as if she had lost all hope in her life. All she could think was, that's as much time as I could buy your original. Now, it's all up to you whether we kill Abito here or not. Abito remained silent and switched on his Kamui. A spatial distortion point occurred when Abito activated Kamui. 
The whirlpool-like spatial distortion drew everything inside it in, causing Tsukihai's body to be deformed as well. Big mistake, she exclaimed as her body was going to be dragged into the Kamui dimension. Abito was startled by a few icy remarks, and his instincts alerted him that he was in danger, but it appeared that it was too late. The next thing Abito knew, he was drowned in a series of extremely large explosions that shook the entire Mizukage building. The floor glowed in silver light, restricting his physical movement, the walls all around him were covered in red flames, and the next thing he knew, he was drowned in a series of extremely large explosions that shook the entire Mizukage building. Boom. Boom 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 a crimson flame barrier appeared across the entire floor the next minute, ensuring that any incoming damage is contained within the flame structure. And now for the final act? Mumbled Tsukihai as she smacked her hand on the floor after weaving the hand signs. Ninpo, kuchiyo se, mugen go yoki baku fuden oyatsu. Ninja, summoning jutsu, infinite multiplying explosive tag explosion technique. P.S. I realize this jutsu probably has a bad name, but I couldn't come up with a better one. The half absorbed clone inside the Kamui dimension was separated into numerous explosive tags by her action, which burst one after another, generating a chain of explosions. At the very least, this should kill him. Sukihai reasoned. Her strategy was simple. She used her clone body to distract Abito long enough for the original to finish her preparations. The clone isn't just a shadow clone, it's a clone made up of explosive tags and a few unique summoning tags concealed inside that would work with Sukihai's jutsu. Clones have body detonated as soon as it was pulled within the Kamui space. Explosive tags detonated along with the clone, but the summoning tags buried inside the clone worked as a portal to summon more and more explosive tags, which continued to detonate. Abito will be drowned by these explosions. Normally, these explosions would not harm him, but because half of Tsukihai's clone body was in the Kamui dimension and the other half was still in this dimension, the explosive tags were summoned on both dimensions at the same time, causing explosions to occur not only in this dimension but also in the Kamui dimension. Now Abito is trapped, if he turns intangible, the explosions in the Kamui dimension would kill him. If he does not make himself intangible, he will be killed by the explosions that occur in this dimension. And the good news is that the explosions will continue until Tsukihai has used up all the explosive tags, which is a significant number, albeit not as enormous as Conan's 6 billion. As a result, even the intangibility time constraint of 5 minutes is useless in this case, as explosions are occurring in both dimensions. Abito is unable to run normally due to the Fuenjutsu trap, which has trapped him inside a unique realm. The red flames of the Achiha flame formation are also present as a precaution to keep Abito trapped inside the Fuenjutsu trap and prevent him from escaping. He also can't phase through matter because he can't turn intangible. He can't teleport, either, because teleporting necessitates manifesting himself, and manifesting himself exposes him to explosives. As a result, he is left with only one choice for saving his life, using his anaji to alter the reality of his death. That is precisely Tsukihai's intention. In this circumstance, he'll have no choice but to utilize his energy to survive, and once he does, I'll kill him for good with the second preparation, Tsukihai reasoned as she covered her left eye with her palm. This method of killing Abito was devised from two methods Conan used in an attempt to kill Abito. The first was to transfer a large number of exploding tags inside the Kamui dimension when Abito attempted to use Kamui. This was a suicide method, but it was effective. It did not kill Abito because he managed to push Conan away, but it did injure him. The second technique was the paper person of god technique, which did kill Abito, but was altered by Abito's use of his anaji, which Conan was unprepared for but Tsukihai is. Tsukihai grumbled, he eh, already used his anaji, as she watched Abito's chakra fade away. She then began weaving hand signs, and golden flames of Ashihomi erupted all over the room, forming a golden sea of fire that engulfed the entire floor in burning golden flames. Now come forth. Tsukihai grumbled as this preparation was completed. I'm going to put an end to your life right now. The dazzling golden flames of Ashihomi lit the original gloomy underground floor in a brilliantly scorching light. The majority of this underground floor has started to melt in the face of these golden flames, the metals used in the swords turned into molten lava, the walls started to melt and deform, wood burned into dust, corpses of shinobi were burned to cinders, it felt as if nothing could survive or maybe, nothing except for Hiramakari could survive this scorching flames, making the scene look like a burning hell. And in the center of this burning hell, at the place where these flames were most intense, at the point where the temperature was the highest and most unbearable, stood Tsukihai while holding the pair of short swords in both of her hands. But she was not affected by the heat of these flames, the headband that previously tied her hair into a long ponytail was cut off at some point in the middle of the battle, as such her beautiful long black hair was now drifting in the scorching heat waves. The golden flames around did not harm her, rather they covered everything around protecting her as if these flames were armor, or better yet part of herself the flames act upon her commands, and she bathed in these golden flames looking like a true goddess of fire. But this goddess of fire currently had a frowned expression on her face, she was waiting, waiting for him to reappear. How long is he going to take? Muttered Tsukihai thoughtfully. 
Because she, herself, has not mastered as anaji, therefore, Sukihai's understanding of this kinjutsu is limited to her impression from the previous life, therefore, her tactics are designed while keeping all this information in mind. Izanagi is based on Rikudo Senen's creation of all things technique, with this dojutsu a user can cast a genjutsu on the reality itself. Izanagi allows the user control over what is real and what is not real for as long as Izanagi is active. Therefore, this dojutsu is even capable of changing the reality of death into a genjutsu. It was said that the power of both Achiha and Senju is required to be able to use Izanagi, whether this information is correct or not is unknown because there were several instances in the Naruto story where a few Achiha were able to use Izanagi without Senju power, Madara is one such example. Anyway, Abido has both Achiha and Senju powers, coupled with Madara's teachings, as such he is perfectly capable of using Izanagi and based on her impression of Sasuke and Danzo's battle, Tsukihai believes that Abido will be resurrected somewhere close by. This is the reason why she has used Achiha flame formation as a barrier and Enten, Ashihomi, to cover the entire floor in a sea of fire. So that, the moment Abido reappears, he will be engulfed by the sea of golden fire and be burned to death, this way, he will be dead for the second time and will be forced to use Izanagi again if he wants to survive. The only thing is, this time he will have to use his Manjiku Sharingan to case Izanagi, and once he does so, he won't be able to use Kamui anymore. Come on Abido, reappear, was the only thought in Sukihai's mind as she observed all her surroundings carefully. But no matter how long she waited, a few seconds, a minute, and a few more minutes passed, but there was no sign of Abido reappearing. This made Sukihai frown. Is it possible that he did not use Izanagi? Was a momentary thought, but she quickly denied this idea, because Sukihai did sense Abido's chakra vanishing suddenly. It is possible that Abido transferred himself to the Kamui dimension instead of using Izanagi at that moment, but Sukihai doesn't think that Abido was in the position to be able to do so. So the only possibility is, TCH, he ran away, huh? Sukihai concluded. At this moment she also realized her mistake. Someone with a good degree of control over both Achiha and Senju's power can extend the time limit of Izanagi. Just because Shimura Danzo was only capable of using one Sharingan for one minute of Izanagi, doesn't necessarily mean that the same case applies to Abido. A Jenin can barely use a B-class Katanjutsu and it won't even burn a Jonin, but the same B-class Katanjutsu when used by the likes of Achiha Madara, the level of power it displays is so superior that even a group of Jonins won't be able to resist it. And at the end of the day, Izanagi too is a Jutsu, it may be a Kenjutsu, but a Jutsu nonetheless, and similar to all Jutsu, Izanagi display different levels of powers in the hand of different people. Shimura Danzo is a non-Achiha and non-Senju. He had both the powers of the Achiha clan and Senju clan transplanted into him, as a result, the extent of Izanagi used by him is limited to only one minute per Sharingan, but the same is not the case with Madara. Madara with just his Achiha power alone managed to suspend his Izanagi for a very long time, as such he managed to fool not only Shodame Hokage but also Naidame Hokage. It must not be forgotten that Naidame Hokage is one of the best sensor Nin and yet he couldn't sense anything, even when he collected Madara's corpse for research and experimentation. From these two instances alone, it can be judged that Izanagi used by different people can display different levels of effects, the time delay of resurrections, or the place at which the caster is resurrected can also be different. To what extent the effects of Izanagi cast by Abido are displayed cannot be judged by Tsukihai, but based on the battle between Conan and Abido in the canon, he was able to stretch it for at least five minutes or more. So, it won't be wrong to assume that Abido is not dead yet and has either extended his resurrection time to a large interval or he has resurrected himself but the place of his resurrection is probably not this place but a different place or maybe a different dimension altogether. In short, Abido ran away, in better words, he withdrew upon realizing that he has no chance of winning this battle, as a result, this battle remained unconcluded. Understanding this Suki can't help but sigh. She is really tired now, it was only adrenaline keeping her on edge and ready for battle but now that Abido is no longer here tiredness has taken over. Even if it is her, she is feeling very tired right now. Using Susanoo for such a long battle, consuming chakra while using Hiramakariai, then consuming half of her chakra in the clone, further chakra consumption by the dojutsu of her left eternal Manjiku Sharingan that is Yayorozu, she used to augment the physical aspects of both the clone and Susanoo. Then further use of Fuenjutsu trap, Achiha flame formation, infinite multiplying explosive tags explosion technique to kill Abido has taken much of her chakra. And that's not all. She further used the golden flames of Ashihomi to cover the entire underground floor to kill Respond Abido, which again caused heavy chakra consumption and drained whatever was left in her. Normally, chakra is not an issue for her, but because currently, she can't use Riyamiyaka's chakra due to certain reasons, as such, even if it is her, she is really exhausted right now. Cough. After a light cough, Sukihai looked at the sea of fire in front of her and only one thought was running through her mind, perhaps only by using Izanami on Abido can the threat posed by him be resolved. Somewhere in Kirigakure. At the moment when Sukihai killed Abido, Yande Mizukage who was sitting inside this cave suddenly opened his eyes. What's different about his pink eyes this time is that they are not dull or lifeless, but they are bright and alive, at the same time burning with anger and frustration. Damn it! Aside from the burning anger reflected in his eyes, feelings of shame surged from his heart, guilt started to breed his thoughts, and a great deal of frustration was clearly evident on his face. Undoubtedly, the moment Abido was killed by Tsukihai, the same moment, Yande Mizukage, who was under Abido's control managed to release himself from the Genjutsu. 
Although he was in a genjutsu and became nothing more than a puppet in Ibido's hand, even then, he is perfectly aware of all the actions he did or better yet all the actions Ibido made him do while he was being manipulated. It brings great shame upon himself when he thinks that he the Mizukage, who has sworn to protect his village, became nothing more than a puppet in the hands of a criminal. He could only watch his village on the path of ruin, helpless to do anything about it. The anger for that masked Achiha and the anger upon himself spread in his chest, and the desire for revenge filled his mind, but he had to restrain himself and calmed his angered emotions, first comes village, everything else comes after that, was the only thought raging in his mind. Yagura picked up his club with unevenly sized hooks on both ends and quickly walked out of the secret cave. He knew that the village is amidst a civil war, and as the Mizukage he has to stop his village from being destroyed. Thank goodness that I regained consciousness at the right opportunity, else he would have used the Sambai sealed inside me to destroy the entire village. Yagura can't help but think as he ran out of the cave. Abito's plan for Karagakure was simple. He had already taken out Yagura from the village and with that, he planned to use the two sides to kill each other for as long as possible. Having Samahada in the hands of Momochi Zabuza made his strength around the same level as Taromi Mei, and with Mei's character, she will definitely protect the village to her last breath. Since the Mizukage is not in the village, so the two sides will have to continue their fights, one in search of Mizukage so that they can kill him, and the second side so that they can protect the village. Of course, Zetsu clones will be used to fuel the fire and when the opportunity is right and everyone is exhausted Ibido will make his move on Karagakure. Yagura, himself will completely destroy Karagakure just like he wanted to use Rin to destroy Kanoha, and this will be Ibido's revenge upon Karagakure and Yagura for using Rin. For this reason, Abido also made sure that Yagura can see everything he is doing to Karagakure because only then will he understand the pain that Rin experienced when she became a puppet in the hands of Karagakure. Of course, Yagura doesn't know all this, but he does know that Abido wanted to use the Sambai sealed inside him to destroy Karagakure. But it seems Abido's plan failed and now Yagura has the opportunity to stop the ongoing civil war in Karagakure. Just as Yandame Mizukage walked out of the secret room, he encountered three people, and they are none other than Hashigaki Kisame, Chinoik Majida, and Kagaya Takashi, the three new recruits of the Akatsuki organization. Seeing Mizukage hurriedly coming out of the room, all three thought, is it finally time, and asked, are you going to make your move Toby? Obviously, these three are unaware that the Mizukage standing before them is no longer being controlled by Toby. Even if had controlled his anger and even he tried to be rational, when he saw the faces of these three anger burned in his heart and only one cold word came out of his mouth, die. Majita of the Chinoik clan instantly realized that something is wrong here, be careful you too, he is no longer being controlled by Toby. Majita's words were more than enough of a warning and the three instantly acted, the intentions were obviously to subdue the Mizukage. D? Mizukage said coldly and instantly used his Suiten Jutsu. Suiten, Mizukagami no Jutsu. Water style, Aqua Mirror Jutsu. Instantly, a water mirror appeared in front of him, and Yagura used his club to tilt it down. Then very next moment, three identical figures of Majita and Takashi appeared out of the water mirror and rushed towards the three. Looking at the exact copy of themselves coming towards them, the expression on the faces of Kisame, Majita, and Takashi were serious. As elite shinobi working in the umbu for quite a while now, they understand that aqua mirror jutsu used by the Mizukage is no simple jutsu, as long as the chakra supply is maintained this jutsu is extremely hard to beat. Not only are the reflective copies capable of showing the exact same level of strength as their originals, but they are also capable of copying the Kekiai Genkai of all the copies to the level of absolute perfection. As such dealing with this jutsu is extremely hard, especially when the user of this jutsu is a Jinchuriki. Kisame's clone collided with Kisame. Majita's clone collided with Majita. Takashi's clone collided with Takashi. Loud muffled sounds of bones colliding, sounds of metal collision, water, and blood crashing could be heard. Repelled by their own reflections, Kisame, Majita, and Takashi jumped backward and were ready to continue the battle. Say Majita Koen, you are from Chinoik clan, are you not? So, is it not possible for you to perform the same jutsu but using blood as a medium instead of water? Kisame asked Majita. Majita had a thoughtful look on his face. Hmm, that certainly is a nice idea, I suppose I can give it a try in the future, but not now while fighting the Mizukage, although I am certain this jutsu's limitation is the amount of light present in the surrounding, and considering that today is the moonless night, so this jutsu used by Mizukage is not at its full power. Takashi said, which means defeating these reflective copies wouldn't be so difficult. Yagura scolded the three individuals, Kisame, as a shinobi born and raised in Karagakure, someone as loyal as you to have betrayed the village to the likes of Akatsuki. Do you have no shame? Or is it that your loyalty to the village was a lie all along? Yagura is not only angry at them but he is also shocked, especially at Kisame. He is really sad and angered that someone as loyal as Kisame would betray the village and take refuge in Akatsuki organization so easily. Kisame said with a melancholic smile, I have long since come to understand that this world is filled with lies someone from Akatsuki vowed to create a world that is not filled with lies, as such I chose the Akatsuki over the village. Is that so? In that case, I have nothing more to say to you Kisame. And what about you Takashi? Did you believe the words of that guy so easily? Your life being spared had nothing to do with him or the Akatsuki. I spared you of my own intention, I had hoped that you could become an asset to the village, but now I think that was a mistake. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Yagura questioned Takashi. Takashi was silent when faced with Mizukage's questioning, he was indeed a bit ashamed, but he knows that he doesn't have much longer to live. 
As the last member of the Kagaya clan, he does not want the clan to just up and vanish in the annals of history. Akatsuki has promised him a cure, and he has had several talks with Tobi, therefore, his mind has already been made up, I do not care for this village, never have and never will. So that's your answer, huh? Yagura said with a bit of sadness, then continued with his previous angered tone, in that case, both of you will die as the traitors. And the next instant, he along with the three reflections rushed towards the three Akatsuki recruits. In Karagakure, while fending off the attacks from a traitor shinobi, Ao looked at the Mizukage building not far away with a serious expression. After a while, he turned to Mei who was fighting against several shinobi not far from him, and said, There are still no signs of any activity from the Mizukage-sama, and with how the battle is going on, the situation in our side seems a bit disadvantageous. How did the situation turn out like this? Last I checked, Momochi Zabuza did not have so many supporters under him, so what just happened in such a short period of time? Mei can't help but frown, she has started to sense that more than just Momochi Zabuza is involved in this coup d'etat. Ao said, even I am not sure, but if this continues, we will never be able to check the situation of Mizukage-sama as we intended to do. The objective of the people led by Mei is to verify the situation of Mizukage, they want to use this chaos to their advantage to do so. Tarumi sighed helplessly when she remembered her past discussion with the elders of Karagakure. She also realizes that this coup d'etat started by Momochi Zabuza is a good opportunity to verify the condition of the Mizukage, but Mizukage doesn't seem to have any intention to make his appearance, and when she sees the shinobi of Karagakure fighting and killing each other, she doesn't really feel good about it. After melting another shinobi with her vapor style, Mei asked Ao, where is Momochi Zabuza? Why is it that he hasn't appeared until now? Ao had no answer to Mei's question, both Mizukage and Zabuza have yet to make their appearance in this coup d'etat. Amidst the coup d'etat going in Karagakure, there is a third presence that nobody here has noticed up until now, or perhaps they have noticed but completely ignored this presence as nothing more than crows, this presence is obviously that of Achiha Itachi. Using his Yadagarasa no Jutsu, Itachi has been observing the entire situation of Karagakure as instructed by Tsukihai. After a while of observing Tarumi Mei on the battlefield, he has reached the conclusion that she doesn't seem to be an appropriate candidate for the position of the next Mizukage. Neither her strength is up to the standard to crush the enemy in one fell swoop, nor is she charismatic enough to turn the shinobi on the enemy side to her side. At normal times she may have been a good candidate for Mizukage but not when Akatsuki is at your tail. She doesn't have enough strength to be able to resist Akatsuki fellows. Let's see if Momochi Zabuza is up to the task. Thought Itachi as he observed Zabuza who was rushing towards a particular house in Karagakure. Outside the house where the current Mizukage was confronting Kisame, Majida, and Takashi. Ha ha ha. I never would have expected that you would suddenly bring me intelligence that pointed towards the location of Yande Mizukage. When I become the next Mizukage, I will make you a squad commander in the Umbu. Said Zabuza to a Karagakure Genin. I am unworthy of your praise, Zabuza-sama. Said the Genin with a respectful attitude. It's just that inside his mind other thoughts were going on. What happened to Abido so suddenly and why did his control over the Mizukage suddenly disappear? I was left with no choice but to lead Momochi Zabuza here to support Kisame and the others. Sai, I don't know what happened to the plan Abido had made for Karagakure. This is just a parasitic Zetsu clone who has taken the form of a Karagakure genin. Because of the support provided by various parasitic Zetsu clones, the coup d'etat initiated by Momochi Zabuza has been going quite smoothly. This is all according to Abido's plan, however, because of Abido's death at the hands of Tsukihai, the plan started to change as Mizukage suddenly regained consciousness, and even if Kisame, Majida, and Takashi managed to hold off the Mizukage, they are not strong enough to defeat Karatachi Yagura who is a perfect Jinchuriki and probably the strongest. Among the current five Kagas. Since the plan has failed so the only option left here is to retreat, and Momochi Zabuza, the initiator of the coup d'etat would serve as good enough of a distraction to give the chance for the three of them to retreat. It would also allow Kisame to get his hands on Samahata. And the poor Zabuza does not know that he is being led around by others for the entire time, in his eyes, the seed of the next Mizukage will soon be his, which is just a genjutsu as it will never be fulfilled. Hearing the noise coming from the house in front of him, and the excited Samahata in his hands, Zabuza is more than certain that Mizukage is inside and fighting against someone. Realizing this Sabuza feels closer and closer to the seat of the Mizukage, now I just have to defeat the Yandame, after that, I will become the next Mizukage. With a smirk, Zabuza waved the Samahata sword and ordered the subordinates to follow him, surround this building and prepare for the attack, our target is Yandame Mizukage Karatachi Yagura, anyone who lands the killing blow on him will gain the position of elder advisor when I become the Mizukage. Yes. The shinobi following him nodded, vigorously, and started to rush inside the house.